Hello, we meet again today. So I'll be doing some unboxing for my new uh, preamp. I just uh, purchased it last week, and this is it. The Elekit 2 preamp with a phono uh, stage as well. This is a new version, uh, TU8550. The previous one, TU8500, actually unboxed in my previous video a couple months back. So this one actually the latest generation with the six tubes in total. <laughs> uh, three for line stage and three for uh, for no stage. So I will be showing the picture of my previous electric tube preamps here. Okay. So without further ado, let's do the quick unboxing for this uh, preamp. Usual stuff, the thick cardboard and then this. The manual. Uh, I trust you are familiar with this uh, manual, right? Because uh, if you ever purchase Elekit earlier, you can see they have a similar, very well structured manual with all the details. We should be able to help anyone with the basic soldering skill to build this uh, kit. Very detailed breakdown how to install and assembly all the components so including the, the schematic as well so which is a pretty good okay next is we see what we have here first of course the tubes you can see here six tubes 412AX7 and 212AU7 so this is definitely a new tubes from Electro Harmonics. This is new tube with a date code of April 2022. So you can see this is really really shiny. Pretty decent tubes, although I might not really plan to use this tube. Maybe good for break in, but yeah, I'll be using my old nose tubes for sure. <laughs> and this is the basic uh, input power supply PCB. Again, if you ever build the other Ella kit, you will be quite familiar with this PCB. This the tube metal shield. It's quite common in old vintage M, and surprisingly they also give in this kit. This is the pack, the pack of capacitors and resistors. As usual, always high quality components here. You can see electrolytic capacitor from Rubicon some low ESR capacitor from Kemet, I believe some Wemas polypropylene capacitors this is for RIAA stage I believe some film capacitors for coupling here and some others electrolytic which sh should be the same from Rubicon What else? Uh, here we can see the bottom fit for holding the chassis and some knobs. Not sure it's a plastic or or what. I could really feel it inside. And then you can see few resistors. Should be metal film or carbon film. This is a standard one. I don't know. It's maybe. KOA brand from Japan or some other stuff hardly to identify but same common resistor being used in other Elekit's product and finally we can see here the big volume pot should be from Alps interestingly Elekit 
TU8550 is using the four gangs volume control. The idea is to use two for volume and two for gain. On my previous uh, preamp TU8500, the gain was switchable with one, one switch. But this one, I think they make it variable. This one, I think for balance and the others is for a lining selector. And some other stuff, tube socket, some heatsink, some plastic connector. Nothing really new. And then what else we can see here? Ah, this uh, RCS socket. RCS socket for the PCB. Nice one. But uh, maybe I'm not using all. The other is the Alcor transformer. I haven't opened it, but I trust the same with the old one, the Alcor transformers rated like 50 volt amps. Not so much. Should be quite okay, good quality. Uh, components. Yeah, I think that's basically all. What else do we have here? Oh, we have the, the, the chassis, of course, inside here. A small chassis. And then this is the faceplate. <laughs> yeah, we have a, the power switch, the balance, volume, and the selector. An Alicate brand. Good. So the other is the PCB. Is a PCB, it's quite big PCB here. All layout, everything, definitely careful design. You need to bend and break some of the PCB because just like playing uh, Lego. You need, to, you need to cut or break some of the PCB and assembly following the instruction. The back side is kind of a black color PCB, gold plated. PCB itself not too thick, right? Maybe about 1.7 mils. And some of the trays actually quite small, but I trust for the line stage, probably not a problem. But maybe we, we can we can jumpers some of the some of the circuit right with the high quality cables so that that will give some improvement as well okay that's basically all yeah i'll not be showing the chassis inside because it's it's too big and i don't see really any value to show that this traditional chassis but one thing i would like to show and for me it's quite interesting is the schematic the schematic here like i shared earlier we can see the volume port actually will be adjusting the input from the selector but at the same time it will also adjust the gain on the back it's quite interesting uh the idea is when your volume is small there could be need to adjust the gain to improve the noise i think in the older older version of of this preamp the 8500 let me again show you the picture on the screen here uh it has a gain switch which is a, just a, a, a switch of selector but in this design they make it variable which is quite interesting right the other interesting thing is if you remember the Wima uh, capacitor earlier, right? This this actually for the RIAA equalization. So Alekit choose multiple 10 nanofarads and 2.2 nanofarad as well, right? To build this kind of filter. I think it's it's very hard to use a single capacitors. Uh, with the high precision, so by by using few capacitors put in in series and parallel, we'll create this kind of uh, network with a better accuracy. 
So this, this does make sense, right? You don't have to go with expensive precision capacitors, but you can get the similar kind of uh, result with the higher precision. So kudos to Elekit, really great design. So what else? Nothing much here, I believe. Yeah, basically that's all. So yeah, let's wait for a few more, I don't know, a few more weeks because I, I'm still busy with my previous Elekit 8500 project. So this one might wait a bit, but I'm quite confident it's gonna be a great kit. So again, thank you for watching. See you again next time. Bye bye. Thank you for staying this far. And I got message from some people that their question on my decision on using this audio not kaisei in the a cathode position so the question was why i changed from the low esr uh, capacitors here into this kaisei i know by default uh elekit is using this akamet low esr capacitors this is a 330 35 volts, I believe. This is a good capacitors, no doubt at all, for its price. So, there are some people questioning my decision replacing those to this audio note uh, Kaisei capacitor. So, some of them might not really understand the reason, so they are asking me. So, I think it's good for me to have a chance to. Uh, to explain it today again thank you for you who staying up this far of the video so let me spend a few more minutes to explain about this so the idea is if you see the original schematic of this other kit you can see that actually they are using a multiple capacitors in series in for the cathode it's the same for the second 12AU, the same for the output 300B. So there are a few reasons for that, I believe, right? First, to simplify the component option. You can see here, 330 is quite common value with 30, 35 volts. So when you're combining all these three, you can create the higher, higher kind of voltage, working voltage, 35 times 3, 105 volt. But at the same time, in average, you only need about 100 microfarad in the cathode. So 330, you, series, you put series in 3, it will give you like a one third of the capacitance, so about 110, right? <clears throat> so that's, I think, one of the reasons why uh, the design actually using this. And of course, you also know, right, by putting these things in the parallel, oh, uh, sorry, in series, it will increase the ESR. So I think that's why the, the selection of a low ESR capacitors like this uh, Comet will be very crucial, right? But again, we're not talking about the quality, the sound or whatever, but my decision actually to use this uh, Audio Note Kaisei, first, of course, I like the sound of these capacitors. Although again, some people might argue, Jimmy, there is no sound of the capacitors, right? But anyway, I like it. Consider maybe I like the colors, the red colors of Blackgate and the yellow gold colors of the Kaisei. And the other thing is, if you can see here, I'm using a hundred volts, 50 microfarad, and I'm putting them in parallel configuration. So by putting them in parallel, I will simply double the capacitance. 50 times two will be like a hundred microfarads. At the same time, I'm maintaining the working voltage, the 100 volts. But if you know, been in this DIY industry for quite long, you know this parallel uh, configuration is known as the Super E uh, used by Blackgate, right? The idea is to cancel the inductance. These both are non-polar capacitors. So the idea of putting non-polar capacitors kind of uh, uh, on 
you configure them uh, in parallel, but you put the inner and the outer foil uh, in the reverse position, you will cancel the inductance, right? So that's the idea why I'm putting them, uh, putting them in here. So I'm config, I, I config them in parallel configuration. So I will get double of the capacitance, 50 times two become 100. At the same time, with the super e configuration, I'm trying to cancel the inductance. I think inductance, inductance ESL is also one of the factor in capacitors. So again, for you who who's telling me like or who questioning me like why I'm changing low ESR to this guy say, again that probably few reason I can share today, right? And I think. The low ESR original design used by Elekit is good because they are setting up things in series, right? When you put things in series, you need to use lower uh, ESR capacitors because you will be adding the, the ESR, right? By the time you put them in series. Uh, in my case, I'm even putting them in parallel. So I will drop the resistance ESR by half. And at the same time, I also cancel the inductance. So, Basically, that's probably the answer. Sorry if it takes a bit long time to explain, but I hope that will help to clarify my decision of putting this uh, setup this way. Again, we're not arguing the sound or whatever, right? But when you do the modification, you will need to consider a lot of factors. First, of course, you need to consider the component selection. At the same time, you also need to understand technical reason behind, right? Make sure your upgrades is not against the rule, right? Or deviates that's far from the original design of the manufacturer. So that's it for today, guys. Thank you again for staying this far and looking forward for the next upgrade uh, for this electric. Okay, one last thing. Some of you might also ask why I haven't got any updates on my TU8900 project. So bear with me for a while because I'm creating a new power supply board for this. I don't think I can fit all the diodes, capacitors, resistor upgrade here because the place is simply too cramped. So I'm building a new PCB, something like this. It will be like a two millimeter stick uh, with a two ounces of gold plated, two ounces of copper, and this should be quite nice PCB. The idea is I'll be separating the high voltage and the filament here so I can fit all the diodes here, the chain of diodes, which is this the upgrade that I'm doing for this uh, electric. I also put like the switch here. The idea is to bypass the PTC. By the time the system is fully heated, I don't think the PTC will do any help, so I can decide to flip the switch and bypass the PTC. It's optional. Without flipping any switch, you can still use the, the PTC. But if you want to flip the switch, you will bypass the PTC. So this PCB somewhere under fabrication process, it will take a while before I'll get them on my hand. But that will be the upgrades that I'll be using here. And then I will kind of a connect the output of this PCB from this PCB then I'll be connecting direct to this kind of input section of the kit so yeah basically that's it so bear with me for a while again I'm doing this for hobby only I need to kind of do my daily work so this project might be a bit slow but anyway I just want to share that we are still on progress for this one so thank you for watching again see you again next time Take care. Bye-bye.